and welcome everyone to the last chapter, last section of the year, 11.1 .1, Space Figures and Cross Sections. No, this is not outer space figures, it's just figures that involve three dimensions. Now, we're going to find the cross sections of solids, understand what polygons and their parts are, understand what platonic solids are, you're going to know what pyramids and prisms are, be able to distinguish between the two, and understand how to apply Euler's theorem and how that works. You're also going to be able to um, construct three-dimensional figures from a flat surface by rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this little lesson I threw in here. Um, I don't even know if it's in the book, but I always thought it was interesting. Rotating a two-dimensional figure to create a three-dimensional figure. Now, nowadays with um, a lot of mechanical engineering type things and manufacturing engineers, this stuff is actually useful in real life. So. If I have this rectangle, this triangle, or this dot, and I'm going to rotate it around the vertical axis, the horizontal x-axis, or this vertical axis, or any line in general, and I just take the figure and rotate it around, okay, it will create a three-dimensional figure if I leave everything, every piece that it rotated in its path. Now, here's the steps into doing this, and they're very easy. Hopefully, these are the right steps, because I think they're pretty good. So, first thing is you're going to draw a reflection over the axis. So, in this case, let's look at A. I want you to reflect that rectangle over the axis that we're rotating it around. Should look like another rectangle, right? So what this is, is pretty much is how wide all right, your figure is. So if I looked at it straight on with no, two, with no 3D, just straight on, so I couldn't see the top, couldn't see the bottom, that's what your figure would look like. Step two, you're going to connect the bases with arcs. Now, when you rotate something around, right, you don't rotate it like, Wink, like wonky, I don't even know how to say the word. Um, you rotate it with an arc, so it goes around in a circle, right? So when you rotate something, you rotate it around in a circle. So you're going to connect this piece when it rotates around here, it goes around here, and then it goes around here. See, it makes like a circle at the top. Same thing with the base. We go from one piece, whoop, or if I'm rotating this way, and then. So that means the top and the bottom of these pieces. Or at least one side of it is usually a circle. Problem number three, you're going to fill in the sides. Now, these pretty much pieces right here is your diameter. So this and this is a flat side, so I can fill it in. You just connect the pieces that are adjacent. See, I fill in the top, that's my top. And if I connect all these little pieces, you can see your three-dimensional figure. And what does A look like? It looks like a cylinder. Why don't you guys try B and C? All right, let's see, B, when I reflect this, triangle down, right? Now, when I connect the bases with arcs, well, this one can't be connected. The only thing to connect with an arc is this, right? So if I connect it, we go around and back. Now, this is all on the inside, this arc, just so you know. So what do you think this figure looks like? If I connect all these pieces to the vertices, this is pretty much like two cones, a cone going to the left and a cone going to the right. Pretty neat, right? All right, C, it's just a point. So I reflect my point. I connect it with a circle, and that's what your answer is. There's nothing else to really connect. Um, the figure you create right here, if you fill in this piece right here, is either a donut, right, just a distance around, all right, or if you want to fill it in, it could be just like a flat circle, right? That's it. No, you don't create, um, which we call it, ovals, always circles. Now what you guys to do is problems one through four using that information. If each of the two dimensional figures shown is rotated 360 around the respective line, creating three new figures, which one of these match those? Go. Come on, we just learned. Just learn this. Okay, just making sure my camera's acting right. So number one, you should get B, All right? Because when I take the circle, I write the circle down here and I connect everything, and it has the open circle in the middle. Number two, when you reflect that, you get E, because you get a circle on the other side, and then you connect all the people pieces, and it is indeed a sphere. Three is not C, because remember what I said, everything has to be circular. So even though I'm putting the rectangle down here, this piece looks the same, that's in the inside, it's actually F. 
because you have to go around. Remember, you do your arcs. And four is not H, it's D. Because when you draw your triangle here, you connect a loop around the bottom of the triangle and you get your comb. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad, was it? Eh, we're gonna do a bunch of different things today. So now what we're gonna do first is polyhedron is that thing. What do you think a polyhedron is? What does it look like? Use this to give you the definition. Three-dimensional solid. Very good. You yell some other things. You yell two more things. Let's see if you get it. The sides have to be polygons. So the sides being polygons means there are no curves. The sides will intersect. There are no open spaces. Face. Face, face. No, not face. There's one more thing. Um, there's no curves, which I just told you. So there are three pieces to this polyhedron. The first one is a face. What do you think the face is? That is the sides, okay? So if you had a box, the actual cardboard part of the box, this flat pieces, the two dimensional pieces would be your face. So it's the polygon. So in this case right here, um, this would be a face. These two trapezoids on the front and back would be a face. Left and right would be a face. Top and bottom would be a face. Those are all faces, all right? Next piece is the edge. What do you think the edge is? Think of it. What is an edge? All right. Edge is a line. All right. It is one dimension and it's where the two faces meet. Okay. So edge here would be all these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And finally got the vertex. The vertex is a point. A point where it has no dimensions. All right. And that is where two edges meet. So where two lines or edges meet, that is your vertices. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that is how it describes. Now, easiest way to describe this with the box. And I just so happen to have a box laying around my house. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of Amazon before. Uh, so say this box is my polyhedron, okay? This flat surface is the face. This piece right here, where's the at? This line that runs and connects the side to the top would be my edge, okay? And this corner piece right here, where the two edges meet, would be my vertices. All right, that help you out? Good. Now I can recycle that. Uh, always recycle. Care for the earth. All right, so I want you guys first to circle the polyhedron. You have to know what a polyhedron is before you begin. Now, remember, polygon, um, all straight sides. Now, it just so happens my second grade daughter is learning this in her class. Not 3D pieces, but what a polyhedron is. The uh, polygon is. So you can't say you don't know. All right, A is a sphere. Nope, it's curved. B is a cube. Good. All straight sides. C. Prism. Good. D. Curve. Bad. No curves. Good. F. I see a circle. That's a curve. Bad. Good. Straight lines. Straight lines. Straight lines. Okay? Straight lines. Polyhedron. Anytime you just throw one little curve in there, not a polyhedron. Got it? Awesome. Let's do these. All right, curve, no. I see a circle, no. I see a circle, no. All straight sides, yes. All straight sides, yes. Sphere, no. Donut, or some name that I forgot, no. Good, 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 and what about K? What do you think? Good, even though it's a pyramid kind of with like the top cut off, it's straight. All right, only one that was good. Y'all good, y'all good, y'all good. Let's move. Prisms. Now, prisms and pyramids are two of the more important things. So first thing is with a prism. What do you think? What do you notice about these prisms? Well, it has two pair of, one pair or two parallel congruent faces and the rest are rectangles. So what that means is you have two faces to your prism. Okay, face, 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 face. Notice they're all the ones that are colored. Those faces are the same. They're the same exact shape. 
And then the thing that connects those two faces is a bunch of rectangles, okay? And those are your other faces. Now, the name of your prism is based on whatever this shape is. So I'm going to have you guys name these. Unless it's all the same side, then it's a cube. Um, and the bases have to be polygons, meaning all the sides have to be straight. You got it? So let's see if you can get this. So number one, rectangular prism. Okay. What about this one? Six side. Hexagonal prism. What do you think? Pentagonal prism. Last one. Cir nope, not a prism. You remember? It has to be a polygon. What is that? It's a cylinder. Right? So it's not a prism. Did I get you? Good. No such thing as a circular prism. Don't even say that. I'm glad I didn't hear it. All right, so a pyramid. What do you notice about a pyramid? What do you think? One polygon. So the base or the bottom of your pyramid has to be a polygon. All sides have to be solid. And the rest are triangles. So all the other pieces are triangles. And they all go to this point right here, which is your... Name is based on the shape. The top is your vertex. I don't know where my vertex went. Where did my vertex go? Oh, apex, sorry. All right, so your apex is the top point. You ever hear that? There's an apex wrestling club. It means you're at the top of the pyramid, top of the food chain. You're the best. Yeah? All right. So any word time you hear the word apex, that's where it comes from. Top of a pyramid. All right? You want to be the top. You never want to be on the bottom. The top, there's a lot of fewer people there. You know? All right, so... Let's name some. What kind of base is that? Rectangle. Rectangular pyramid. Six sides is a hexagonal pyramid. One, two, three, four, five sides. Pen. Is that seven? One, two. Oh, see how this is fuzzy and I gave you a bad shape? If you can't tell how many sizes are, count the number of lines that are running to the apex, the number of edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, my bad. All right, this one, these are kind of blurry, so I'm gonna count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is a deck. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be ten. That should be a um, decagonal pyramid. Wow, I always kind of nine before. All right, if there was nine here, it'd be a nine on bottom. All right, I think there's 10 though. I could be wrong. My eyes, my contacts have been really bad. All right, so anyway, that's not important. Um, label the following as a pyramid or a prism. This goes back to when I first started teaching this class. What do you got? A is a prism, base, Ace, the same. B is pyramid. This stuff's simple. Anyone know what that's called? It's called the, it's in France, the Louvre. What's a building? Prism. Pyramid, all right? Even though it's a star-shaped bottom, it goes to an apex. Nice little cake right here. Prism, it's actually a bunch of prisms stacked on top of each other. And finally, that is a prism. You know what that's called in real life? It's called a prism. All right. We all good? Awesome. I might need some new pictures. These are a little blurry. I don't, I don't like that. All right. Number four. Sketch the following figures. So I want you guys to sketch these four figures. Start with a rectangular prism. Easiest way to do it is draw your two bases. And then you connect the um, corresponding pieces. Bottom left, bottom left, bottom right, bottom right, top right, top right, uh, top left, top left. Triangular prism, draw two triangles. Connect the pieces, there's your triangular prism. Square pyramid, so now you put a square on the bottom. You kind of have to draw it like a rhombus. Um, and then you just put a point above it, and you connect them all to that point. Pentagonal pyramid, so you're going to draw a pentagon. Draw a point somewhere, and just connect everything to that point. And that's it. Easy as pie. If you drew these to the side, 
facing this, or you drew them facing down, it's okay. It doesn't matter how you draw, just as long as you have the right concepts. All right, now we're gonna move on to Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem is a very interesting theorem. This is a good way to find out how many faces, vertices, and edges each figure has. The way it works is, it shows the relationship between these figures. So, um, the sum of the faces and the vertices is two more than the number of edges. So what that means is, sum, faces and vertices, so f plus v is two more, equals two plus the number of edges. So what I want you guys to do is number eight, I want you to find the number of faces, vertices, and edges. No problem. All right. See if you got it. Faces. F is faces, right? Left, right, top, bottom, front, back. That's six. Six faces in the prop. Vertices. Points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? Edges are what? Lines. One, two, three, four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A lot of numbers there, right? That's all right. Now, the way to check this is, faces plus vertices, 6 plus 8. Edges plus 2, 12 plus 2. 6 plus 8 is 14, 12 plus 2 is 14. You're good to go, all right? Means you didn't make a mistake. Euler's theorem is an excellent way to check your answers, okay? Hey, do some more. Why don't you guys do 9 and 10? All right, it should be done. Faces, five. Front, back, left, top, bottom. Vertices, where's vertices at? Um, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Edges, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one right here. Faces. Oh, you want to check? 5 plus 6, 9 plus 2, 11 equals 11. Problem number 10. What'd you get? Faces. 7. Now, an easy way to find the faces on this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sides. So each side has a triangle that runs here, right? So there's 6 sides, so there's 6 triangles, and you have a base, so you have 7. Vertices, same concept. 6 points here. One vertex is seven, and then the edges is actually the number of sides we have here, which is six, and then you got six lines moving there, so it should be 12. Seven plus seven, and you can always just count. Um, it's 14, 12 plus two is also 14. There's your answers. Good? All right, try 11 and 12. All right, way this works, very simple. Faces is six. Front, back, left, right, top, bottom. Vertices, four in the front and four in the back, so is eight. And the edges, four around this rectangle, four around this rectangle, and four that connect them is 12. Six plus eight and 12 plus two, Euler's theorem. 14 equals 14, is that true? Of course it is. So that's your answer. All right, let's look at the 12. Five faces, four triangles and your base, vertices, four on the triangle and one on the apex is five as well. Edges, four around the square and four going up to the apex is eight. Five plus five, all right, five plus five, does that equal eight plus two? Ten equals ten, good, we did a good job. All right, you guys get this stuff? Let's just start with Last two. Face last two. All right, faces. You don't count this face in the inside because that's not a face. That's actually covered up. You just count the stuff on the outside. So the answer is actually eight. You got the four from the pyramid on top and the four from the pyramid on bottom, which is eight. Vertices, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't count these twice. And then edges, you got four running up the top, four around the middle, and four going to the bottom, so that's 12. 
8 plus 6 equals 12 plus 2. 14 equals 14. There's your answer. All right. Ready to problem 14? Faces, four faces, front, back, top, and the whole bottom curvy thing is a face, right? Vertices, one, two, three, four. Edges, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if we use Euler's theorem, four plus four, six plus two, eight equals eight. Okay, so then we got that. Well, you shouldn't have because this isn't a polygon, so you shouldn't eat the polyhedron, so you shouldn't use the rules there. Here's my big X. This problem is bad. All right, usually I have a big X that pops up on, I put on the board. But we're not in class, so I can't do it. All right. You never even have to do anything. Even though it happens to work. It's just strange. All right, next one. Platonic solids. Um, These we don't get into. They're just congruent faces with the same number of faces meeting at each vertice. So, for instance, each one of these is a congruent triangle. All right. Each vertice has three pieces meeting at it. Um, so, this has four faces in general. Cube, you guys should know, has six faces. All right. All the sides are squares. Regular octahedron, if you count here, four on top, four on bottom is eight faces. Um, dodecahedron, soccer ball, look familiar, um, 12 faces, all that are pentagons, these, all the faces are triangles, once again, regular icosahedron, and then it has 20 faces, so, all you really need to know, though, is, um, all the faces are the same, okay, they're all congruent, um, and they all meet at the same point, and all the, um, faces on these figures are all regular figures, all the sides are the same. All right, easy enough. That's that's about as deep into platonic solids as I feel like. Now we're gonna go over cross sections real quick. I got a couple of videos here real quick to show you. Um, that hopefully describes this. Let's see if my computer can handle this. So what a cross section is is when you cut a figure in half. Why aren't we going anywhere here? Oh, where we go? Where's my video? Worked so good the other day. I'm actually getting off my computer. Oh, you saw my computer. You go into here. I'll just do it this way. So the first video. Where'd you go? There we go. If you were to take a log and cut a log, the circular piece left over would be its cross section. All right. If you were to take a watermelon and cut a watermelon, circular piece left over would be your cross section. And if you were to, this is you guys probably favorite. I couldn't find an updated phone, but if you were to take one of your nice little smartphones that you guys can't live without, and you were to cut it, you would be left with a rectangular cross-section. All right. Um, that being said, what exactly is a cross-section? It is when you cut a figure. That didn't work out as well as I planned. Um, you end up with something. It is a surface or a shape that would be exposed. Okay, when you cut things, you expose the middle of it by making a straight cut through something. All right, so right here, if I were to take a cube, and this would be my blade right here. If you guys ever played with that, Fruit Ninja, when you chop the stuff, all that stuff is your cross sections. All right, you would cut it right through the middle. What would be left over? That figure right there. What is that figure? All right, so I take it, I rip off the top. What is this figure that's left over? It is a square. All right, so do the rest. So this one, taking the same exact figure, now I'm cutting it diagonal. All right, you should have done all these problems. When you do that, this is your cross section. This is the view of it. You have the triangle here, you this, you pull off the other side. 
that is a rectangle. All right. A hexagonal prism. You cut it right down the middle. All right. Take the other piece away. You're left with a hexagon. See, I took this hexagonal prism and I cut it right this way. I cut it the top straight off. So I made two trapezoids here. What would this long cross section be? Well, it'd be a rectangle. Okay. Um, oh, I have another cube. I take my cube now and I just cut the corner, but I cut it at a angle. So that right there would be my cross section. All right. It'd be this piece because I ripped off the other piece. And what does that shape look like? Parallel bases. This one's a little bit longer than this one. It would be a trapezoid. All right. 19. Now I'm just cutting off the corner. When I cut off the corner, what shape am I left with? A triangle. And here I have a cone. I'm cutting it straight across the top. I'm left with a circle. All right, that's it. Nice and easy cross section, right? Now we're just gonna go over the homeworks and then we're done. So name the following polygons, if they are polygons. If it's not a polygon, you say not a polygon. So number one. One, two, three, four, five. Pentagonal, and it is a pyramid. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hexagonal, and is it a prism? This one. One, two, three, four, but, but, up, oh, curve, not a polygon. All right? Use Euler's theorem to see. Make sure your faces, edges, and vertices are the same. Faces, front, back, left, right, bottom, is indeed five. Edges, Three for the triangle, three for the triangle, and three connecting them all is nine. Vertices is one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to check your answers. Faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. Eleven does indeed equal, oh, 11 equals 11. You're set. Number five, faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means there's six rectangles. Seven is the front, eight is the back. Edges, you have your six for the pentagon here, or hexagon. Six for the hexagon there and six connecting it. Six times three is um, 18. And vertices is one, two, three, four, five, six. And another six is 12. Euler's theorem, five, uh, eight plus 12 is 20. 18 plus two is also 20. We're good. This one right here, faces front, back, right? Bottom is three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Edges. 18, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 6 on the back, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, wait a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, 12, and 6 is 18. Vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 6 in the back is 12. Does 12 plus 18, 20, equal 20? It does, so we did it right. Okay. Finally, the cross sections. When you chop this, you get a circle. If you chopped it horizontally, it would be a rectangle. Rectangle, right? If you chopped it horizontally, it'd still be a rectangle. And then the cone, when you chop it up and down, you get a triangle. Horizontally, we already said, would have been a circle. All right, so well, that is that. Hopefully, you guys have a good graph, uh, a grasp on what um, polyhedrons are, the properties of them, and how they work. And um, now we're going to go over how to find all the volumes. So until next time, I'll see you there. We only got three things left. Good? All right.